Hey guys, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Lattes with Lindsay. We are on already episode seven. I'm so happy that each and every one of you have continued to tune in to this podcast because education is truly power and so is knowledge. So why not take a little bit of time on your drive or while you're running or even if you're at home just to educate yourself on different healthcare professionals and how they can really benefit you. So today I have an acupuncturist. Her name is Christelle. She is amazing and very, very talented at what she does. And I'd love for her to get into what the profession is and how it can truly benefit you long term and potentially short term. So without further ado, how you doing? Christelle. Hey, Lindsay, how's it going? It's going. Enjoying this day. I'm so excited to be here today. Yay. Well, we're excited to have you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I've pretty much had a lifelong passion for holistic medicine. And so um, I am a massage therapist first, which I've probably been, hold on, for about 11 years. And when I was practicing, Um, I noticed that there was like sometimes a missing link with my practice, meaning um, there was a lot of energetic um, things happening with people. And I I just wanted to know more. And I always did a lot more courses to sort of figure out what was more beyond the body, right? I was super interested in energy, um, took a bunch of Reiki courses, yoga, et cetera. And then I I stumbled upon acupuncture just like that. I mean, you hear about it here and there, but I have an aunt who uh, had cancer of the liver and she embarked in the acupuncture journey. And at one point they had to remove part of her liver and the acupuncture actually helped to regenerate her whole liver, which was super amazing. So I kind of dived into it and I was like, okay, I want to go for some treatment, see, see what that does. Um, And so I first uh, took some acupuncture courses through a college called uh, College of Acupuncture and Therapeutics in Kitchener-Waterloo. I did that under the umbrella of my massage therapy practice. So um, that was super exciting. Uh, I started, so I think I did that. I completed all of that by 2012. So I've been practicing some form of acupuncture for for a long time now. So so I did that for a little bit. Uh, I own my own clinic as a massage therapist in Northern Ontario, Timmins. So uh, for about seven years. And acupuncture got regulated in Ontario in 2013. Four years ago, I decided to go back to school to learn acupuncture from the traditional Chinese medicine standpoint. Um, which is very, very different than um, the, the, the Western way to kind of look at it uh, from just, you know, the muscles and, and the tissues. Like we dived into the whole energetic system and, and all of the organs and all that, which is super, super cool. So uh, I attended Georgian College for, for the three-year program, right? Georgian <laughs> College. So I moved from Timmins, Ontario to come to Georgian College uh, in Barrie. So that was a three-year program. And then uh, I became a registered acupuncturist. So I've been an acupuncturist for more than a year now. So Nice. And how long was the, the acupuncture course? How long did that take? It's, it's six semesters. So it's equivalent to three years. Three years. Okay. That's amazing. That's really cool. And that was that was at Georgian College in Barrie, you said, right? That's right. And so the uh, funny thing is, is I'm French, right? So that's my fun fact. <laughs> but I think that comes across with my accent. But um, the first time I studied in massage therapy, I studied in French. And so studying in English was also a little bit of a fun challenge. So my English has gotten better and I've learned the body in English now too. So. <laughs> it's always, it's always funny when, when you're in the clinic too, because you know, you can hear yourself trying to say like, you know, like the, you know, like <laughs> that bone or, you know, that muscle <laughs> or whatever. And it's, it's always so cute to hear because it is hard, but how, how do you find, you know, being bilingual in these professions? Is it handy with, with certain types of clients? It is. It definitely is. I think in Barrie, um, 
like a lot of people don't know, but there's a big French population, maybe between 15 and 20% is what I've noticed. So once in a while, like when people hear my name or my accent, they go, oh, what, what, you know, what's that accent? And it's French. So then they're like, oh, I speak French too. So then we switch to French, but obviously everyone leads with English here. But um, being bilingual is a little bit better, I found, in northern Ontario because there's a bigger population. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So where did you start in, say, Timmins and then you kind of came south for school? Like, why didn't you go back up to Timmins to work instead of staying like, you know, because you stayed in Barrie, obviously. So oh, that's, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, I've just been out of school now for almost almost two years now. So um, from Georgian College. And from there, I, you know, you you sort of evaluate and see like where do you want to go next and I never had any intention of staying in Barrie but I love Barrie so far so so far this is where I'm living and I love the outdoors so Barrie has a lot to offer and a lot of great people here too so oh <laughs> it's so funny because I mean when I decided to move back like because you know as as you know like I went to Georgian College too for massage and uh it's interesting because I went back home and I moved back to Brampton and then for some reason I always knew that I was going to move back to Barrie at some point because it was just something about it. It's outdoorsy, it's full of water, good people, small town and uh, yeah, you fast forward and then you get back here. So <laughs> so that's awesome. No, I mean like, you know, you, you often think like, oh, you know, your, your roots are where it's comfortable um but there's there's something about Barry like you said it's it's wonderful and the, the mindset of people is um is a little bit different in in a, in a very positive way yeah yeah it's very calming here I find you know anywhere you go I know the the south side of Barry is getting a little bit crazy <laughs> near Costco but um definitely loving the north side and and all the nature that it has so you know, with acupuncture, you know, what are the different types of acupuncture? Like what, what really is it? So acupuncture is um, the application of tiny little needles, right? So puncture means to, to puncture, right? Where you think of something. So you're actually going through the skin into um, the tissue. So sometimes in muscle layer um, and other tissues. Um, and acupuncture um what so there's there's different types so like like you're asking so there's the traditional chinese medicine way of doing acupuncture and then there's something that we call dry needling or there's so many different names for this um they're not coming to me at the top of my head right now but um a lot of chiros physios massage therapists other healthcare professionals who use acupuncture within their treatments um, a lot of times to help with uh, pain protocols. So um, where they're targeting trigger points or muscles that are, are maybe irritated or not happy to sort of release some of the tension that's there. So um, I have training in both, but my later training uh, at Georgian College was um, the traditional Chinese medicine way. And so the, the difference a little bit here is that... Um, the acupuncture, the traditional acupuncture is really going deep into the root cause of the problem or pain or discomfort. So uh, rather than just treating the symptom, right, um, we're evaluating the whole body from A to Z. So we're not just asking questions on your pain, we're going to ask questions on all of your body systems. For example, um, your digestive system, your sleep cycles. Um, if you have, um, you know, we're going to talk about your pee, we're going to talk about your bowel movements, etc. So we really go into great detail with all of the functions of your body, because sometimes you're hot, you're experiencing little discomforts, but you think it's normal, right? Most of the time people think, oh, we're aging. These are kind of normal. Let me tell you, they're not normal, right? And so in traditional Chinese medicine, we uh, compile all this information and uh, we see where there's imbalances that are happening. So traditional Chinese medicine 
looks at the yin and yang of things. So what that means is the opposites and the polars. So we really believe that for you to be healthy and pain-free, right, and living a, a happy life, that everything has to be in balance. And that means in all aspects of your body. So when your sleep is off, for example, that might affect um, the pain that you're having in your foot, for example. Or sometimes you could have a shoulder pain and it could be related to maybe constipation that you're having because the energy flows in the body um, everywhere and it's interconnected and it's it's quite interesting. It's very complex, but it's, it's really simple when you break it down. Um, right. So if there's if you want things to be balanced and. Um, sometimes, so there's energy that flows in the body through, um, through pathways that we call meridians. Okay. So we study these meridians and, uh, sometimes if there's too much energy that's flowing or not enough, it will create pain, discomfort, etc. So if there's too much energy passing, my job as an acupuncturist is to reduce that energy that's flowing. Okay. And then if there's not enough, I want to be stimulating the energy that's flowing. But of course, it's a lot more complex than that. But I don't know if that's clear. Go to the root cause rather than just, just, you know, treating the symptom, which is what the Western way of, I mean, I have nothing against our Western medicine. It's got its place. But often what we do is um, we just put a bandaid right on the wound rather than addressing it and why, why is it happening right this, this holistic medicine um really is effective at rebalancing everything in the body which is why i love it so much yeah well it's a great profession because you're combining your massage therapy experience and you know your reiki and your acu um and and all of those play a huge part on mind body and soul right and of course you got your yoga as well so you know you can really zen a body out um, through balance. And how do you find your Reiki plays a key part with your Accu? Do you find that it really connects with the, the energy levels? Well, it's very interesting because um, if you look at the body and the way it's been studied for years, so acupuncture has been around for thousands and thousands of years, more in the Eastern part of the world. Um, so when you when you look at Reiki, for example, Reiki is a way of treating uh, the body and rebalancing um, the energies in the body again uh, through through touch, through the energy that you're feeling mostly through your hands. Sometimes people do it by distance, and even so, I've studied Reiki. I've also studied um, yoga. I'm also a yoga instructor, and yoga they just have another definition for the energy. Uh, they call it the chakras, right? You have your centers of energy in your body. So it doesn't matter where it's coming from. And there's all sorts of different types of um, energetic body work, we'll say. They're all similar. It's intertwined. It's, it's very, very similar. And I found it to be interesting um, in practice. So what's, what's great about the acupuncture is you actually have a physical tool that you're inserting in the body. Mm -hmm. So people will often relate to that a little bit better than just doing the Reiki where sometimes you're not even touching them and they're like, are you really doing anything? <laughs> right? <laughs> so the, the thing with the acupuncture is while inserting the needles, you're actually creating an antihistamine response. So you're inserting a needle right? And these, these are very, very fine. We call them ouchless needle because they're so thin. So you could fit about six of them inside a needle where they draw blood from you just to kind of give you an idea of the gauge, right? Um, so super, super tiny. Yeah. And um, so what happens is while you insert something in the body, the body goes, hey, this is a strange object. It's not supposed to be there, right? So, so the body has a, a, a reaction action so usually you'll see some redness around the needle so that's the body saying hey i don't know what this is like i'm gonna react so what happens is there's a there's a stimuli that happens a reaction there's a signal that goes to to the brain and then it comes back to the location where you've put the needle and it sedates what's happening so 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 essentially you're putting something locally where where there's an issue 
right? Again, like I said earlier, it's either in, there's an excess or there's, there's a deficiency happening. So we want to rebalance that. So it's quite amazing how the body actually works. But by applying that physical object in the body, the, the body rebalances itself. It's quite amazing to see. It, it must be fun to watch someone, you know, change right on your table. Like that's, that's honestly like the best part of the profession. I've actually seen, so we, we, we use acupuncture for all sorts of reasons, but I've actually um, seen before my eyes, actually I needled someone's back that had a scoliosis. So scoliosis is, um, as you know, it's just a curvature in the spine, right? And often that takes a lot of different treatments through chiro exercise, massage to rebalance that. And so I've just placed needles all along the spine in between the, the vertebrae. And of course, as, as you see the visual, it's crooked, right? It's, it had that S shape. And then 30 minutes later, you see the needles all realign as the spine corrects itself. It's so amazing to see. Jeez. Yeah. I, lo- I love that. That's sick. Yeah. That's re- no way. I think that's, that's amazing. Cause you know, you almost want to say like, Oh, I should have took before and after photos, but you know, you never know because every mm-hmm. treatment's different. You know, someone maybe react, you know, really well to that. And some may not react really well, but for the people who are getting those positive like responses, I think that's a great way to you know <laughs> show them it works. So exactly. with those needles, is there are they all the same size or are they different sizes for like different parts or how does it work? So there are different sizes. There are different lengths of needles as well. So um, <clears throat> we have well over. 350 points that we could use along the channels which I said are called meridians in acupuncture so in traditional Chinese medicine we use points along these channels so when you're talking about dry needling that I said was was a type of acupuncture before sometimes they get off of the channel that's why they call it dry needling because you're not on the channel which often has great benefits because you want to reach a trigger point maybe which is a knot in a muscle to release etc but um there are different areas of the body so there are points on the face on the head in the hands on the arms legs but uh toes you know so of course um if you're if you're going to put a point that is on the hand versus on the butt you can see how there's a the the muscle mass is a lot different right so if if i'm treating someone who has hip pain for example and i need to put one in the gluteus muscle um the the length of the needle will be a lot longer than one that will be in the hand for example right um so we could reach a length to we could go anywhere from a couple millimeters to maybe like 12 centimeters but think think about it right like sometimes in the glutes they're they're very thick right so you got to be able to reach the the specific point and each point has a different depth um where the energy lies so but sometimes on average the needles are about you know a centimeter and less usually is like the average the, the longer ones are usually in, in the hip. For the gauge, which is the thickness of the needle, um, if you're working with children or elderly people who are, are a bit more fragile, we use very, very even finer needles. Um, so we use finer needles in more deficient people. Um, where the energy is not up to par and just to be a bit more gentle but someone who has a lot of energy like an excessive type of energy like think of a strong bodybuilder for example you can't use very thin needles the body won't react as much so you need a little bit of a thicker gauge needle so these are all chosen um according to each person when they come in it's case by case you know you could fit about six of those inside a needle that you draws blood from one of your veins or right you know i i went for an actual acupuncture treatment and my god like they are not that bad <laughs> like you yeah. mentally like you think that it's it's going to be horrible but it's that you really don't feel it. it just feels like a flick like if someone's flicking your arm that's what it feels like a needle bite, right? Like yeah. some, that's just it. So some mosquitoes, like 
later, like, let's say you're on a bonfire and, you know, you didn't protect your arm or whatever. And then after you're like, oh, how come I got all these mosquito bites? So you don't even know that they bit you. So it's the same idea with the acu. Sometimes you're like, oh, did you already put that, that point in like that needle there? Cause I didn't feel that one. But sometimes you've got that odd mosquito you're like, oh, and you just smack it because you feel it. So sometimes you do feel it depending on the area. Yeah, exactly. I feel like some places on people are more tender than others or for sure. Like I think size is also a huge factor. Like you said, there's some areas in your body that have thinner or you know, very thin skin for um, the elderly. So how do you, you know, kind of manage different conditions that people come in with? Like, are there conditions that absolutely can't get acupuncture or ones that you would advise to get acupuncture, anything like that? Oh, there's so many different conditions that we could treat with acupuncture. So, um, like I said, you know, when, when it came down for me before, like as a massage therapist, I was pretty much restricted to muscular skeletal disorders. Now I can treat anything from all of that um, right. So there in those instances, like I help to manage pain, um, but I can treat all sorts of things from, um, you know, sinus congestion to paralysis to um, digestive conditions, which I love to treat. And, you know, infertility, uh, someone who has hemorrhoids, constipation, um, like to help someone even like reduce their blood pressure in their body. Um, someone who has allergies, you know, someone who wants to to stop um, smoking, like there it's endless. Anything that is uncomfortable or out of balance in the body of any system can help. Like even with um, people with skin conditions, there, there's and plus we also can do um you know, cosmetic things, you know, a lot of people will get like Botox Mm -hmm. injections and that sort of thing. We can actually put needles in the face, like around where the wrinkles are and just stimulate the production of collagen in in your face and that sort of thing. So it's such a great healthy alternative for, for anything, right? Wow. That I didn't, I didn't know about the whole, the, (laughs) if anyone has recently had Botox or wants more collagen, Come see your local acupuncturist. I love it. I love it. How long are the treatments? Like, your, for example, like the first treatment versus like the continuation treatments. How long are those typically? So the first treatment usually um, lasts a little longer because the questions that are being asked are um, are more numerous than if you were coming in uh, to see other healthcare professionals because I'm going into all the body systems, like I said, I want to know everything from, um, you know, sleep, energy, stress levels, emotion, digestive, every, every little thing I'm asking them the question. So usually, typically, if I want to treat someone in the first initial assessment, I usually uh, take aside a good hour and a half for the person. So um, some people will take, you know, 30 minutes to throw the question question um while discuss what's happening in their body some people could take up to an hour right some people's list of medication is like is like you know pages and pages so um <laughs> I, I love when they come in with the binders <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what I love those, those are the funnest for me I mean I love treating simple things um, but, uh, the complicated cases I love because that means there's more imbalances in the body. And so that's where it becomes really fun. It's like playing hide and seek with where's exactly. the root cause, what started all of this, right. To spiral it down this way. So it becomes fun. But the first time, like I said, an hour and a half is usually what I take for the client, but treatments can last anywhere from, um, at least 30 minutes is usually what is required for follow-up treatments, but anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Um, it really depends what we're doing. So in acupuncture, I'm not only using needles to sort of stimulate uh, different areas in the body. Uh, there's so many, many different modalities that are used as well. So um, we can use something called Twina, which is a form of Chinese massage. Um, we also use something called gua sha, which is, um, it's essentially a little tool 
used to, to scrape the, the skin and tissue. So a lot of times when there's um, really congested areas of blockages, it, it's needed to move the energy along. So we use this to, to sort of create a good circulation, um, which is super effective. Um, and so there's no puncturing of the skin there, right? So that's just an, a, a good outside um, tool. Uh, cupping is also a modality that I use, which is everyone loves cupping. And I think Michael <laughs> Phelps kind of put us on the map for that because people are watching the Olympics and they're like, what's going on? What are those like red circles? It looks like you got attacked by an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the first time I saw that, I was like, what happened? But even Gordon, I forget his last or his first name right now, but the the NBA player who was doing the slam dunk competition, he had them all over his shoulders. And I was just yeah. like, there it is again, right? That's so, awesome. So clipping is, is, is the same as gua sha. It helps to bring a good local circulation to an area that's congested. And of course, we all know that athletes get a lot of congestion because they're working their bodies, you know, over time, all the time. And so it's an effective way to, to heal and bring good circulation to prevent pain um, and discomfort, right? Yeah. So what else is there as modalities? I can also use um, uh, electroacupuncture, which a lot of other healthcare professionals can do that as well. So what that is, is um, between two of the acupuncture points will connect um, a current from one to the other and um, just to bring more of a, a, a frequency of an energy between two points, which is, which is indicated in, in a lot of cases. So you also asked me, like, um, are there instances where some people can't use acupuncture? There are. Um, women who are pregnant have to be, um, have to be careful sometimes. Um, th it's, indicated for them to come in for a lot of different symptoms. But when, when it comes to a pregnant woman, um, there are some points that we absolutely cannot use, which um, all acupuncturists are well informed of this and very well trained. Um, but there are some points that we don't use for a lot of people. So there are some points that like create a very strong energy in the body. So we could avoid. Um, sometimes again, uh, the elderly, uh, depending what's going on and if their bodies are a bit too deficient. And mm -hmm. again, um, we don't have to use acupuncture. We could um, use any of the modalities that I just named. And sometimes even if someone is extremely scared of needles, because that is a thing, a lot of people are, are fearful, or if it's not indicated, we can use pressure. So what we call acupressure. So we'll just use the same points that we normally use, but we just apply a pressure. And we'll do that with Twina through like um, uh, that uh, Chinese uh, massage. Nice. And how long do you typically leave the needles in for? Like, because the treatment times are all different, but how do you, how do you justify how long to keep the needles in? So the shorter duration you leave the needles in, um, is where you want your you're doing more of a stimulation okay so um <clears throat> so if someone has um it, it, the the longer you're you're leaving the needles in is when you're trying to sedate something so what i mean by stimulate and sedate is um, when there's a deficiency where the energy is low in different areas, we want to stimulate that. So shorter, sh shorter duration of um, uh, retaining the needles in. And when something's excessive, we want to sedate that. So that's when there's too much energy. Yeah. And also, um, it's the same as massage therapy or uh, chiro or osteopaths, like how you determine how many treatments someone will need um, also goes with if it's if the condition is acute or chronic. So what that means, right? Like as you know, um, acute is something that just happened, right? Uh, it needs attention right away. Um, 
chronic is something that you've had for so long that's just lingering around. For example, someone who's had back pain for 10 years, that's something that's chronic, right? So when something is chronic, you'll need more treatments on a longer, uh, sorry, less treatments, but on a longer duration of time. But when something's acute, which is just happening, for example, someone who's having like a sinus infection, for example, you want to address that right away and it's, and it's acute. So you'll have more treatments, but shorter, um, may, maybe the, it will be within a week or two, right? Like a shorter um, time frame. So every case we sort of evaluate. And you know what? Even though we think sometimes the person will need less treatments or more treatment, we have to, we have to evaluate as we go, right? So mm-hmm. each, each session, you, you sort of do a mini evaluation of what's going on, the progress, how someone's reacting to treatment. Um, sometimes the, the selection of points um, will change as the time goes on too with with uh, with a person. And especially like when you find new spots too. You know, if you're specifically treating, you know, say a low back, you know, chronic injury, and then you know you finally release that, but then it refers to the front of the hip. It's like okay, we're right. still going. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. When things start to release in one area that you're working, so as you know, right, Lindsay, like the body has a hard time um, sort of feeling more than one pain at a time, right? So, for example, if you have a chronic, I don't know, uh, you've sprained your ankle, right? And you, you constantly have ankle pain and you've had it for years and years, but then you hurt your lower back, for example. Well, guess what? You're not going to be feeling your ankle pain. The body goes, hey, my lower back hurts. <laughs> so you're, the body has a hard time feeling more than one pain at once. So once you start to maybe address the back pain, then the body goes, well, what about the foot? I feel the foot now because this pain is lessening. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's hard to sometimes explain to someone because they've been so fixated on that one pain that then when, you know, a new pain happens because we release it or whatever, you know, then they come in, they're like, okay, well, this feels good, but now it's this. And it's like, okay, you know what? That's okay. We can, we can figure this out. We can reassess and all that kind of stuff. Do you find that you reassess every single treatment or is it, you know, like halfway through the treatment plan that you reassess? How does that go with ACU? Um, I propose a treatment plan when we start. So let's say, Lindsay, you were to come, um, I don't know, you're coming for um, a shoulder pain. And I do the evaluation and I gauge and I think, okay, you're going to need maybe four treatments um, within the next two weeks, for example. Well, I'll for sure, you know, reevaluate at that point because that's my original thought but every time you're coming in I'm for sure going to be reevaluating we're going to see maybe um maybe you were having a problem with the range of motion with some pain right you, you weren't able to maybe extend the the shoulder fully or, or whatnot but let's say let's say you know come the second treatment you know you've fif- maybe you've improved maybe 50% and then the third one you've improved maybe almost 100%. Well sometimes you don't have to go through all of the treatments if you're getting better faster or sometimes if your healing is taking a little longer and who knows maybe you're not doing your homework at home or you know other other factors come in you know maybe you were stressed out or maybe you had to lift something that was heavy that sort of re- irritated the area right there's so many factors that come into play when you're on a healing journey right it's not linear it's kind of bumpy right it's true <laughs> it's so true because you you hit a plateau or um you know you get better and then you wake up the next day and you're back to square one but that's it's normal and i think that's the biggest thing that people have to always try and remember is that, you know, we can only do so much as healthcare professionals and then we give you home care and it's your responsibility to try and take that upon yourself to, to do it yourself as well. Because, you know, our goal is not to have you for a lifetime (laughs) as much as we love our clients, but, you know, we want to see you improve. We want to see you change. So, um, you know, how, how do you find it with home care? Like when you, when you give your clients home care, do a lot of them, you know, really focus on trying to do it or is it 50, 50? Um, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I think, 
um, I think what happens, and I think this is where I believe in healthcare, um, there needs to be a little bit of a, a mindset shift is people come in to see someone for help, right? And they say, here's my body, you know, um, I'm experiencing, you know, these pains, A, B, C, um, please help me, right? And so I believe it's amazing how people are reaching out and they're coming to us for tools. But where I think the mistake sometimes is, um, people will uh, put their, their health in your hands. And so they take that literally. They think, well, I'm coming to see this person for help, so they have to fix it. Like I'm giving them the responsibility to fix me. Well, we all know that an injury has multi, multi layers, right? So there is not just the physical component, there's the mental component, there's what you put in your body for food, um, you know, liquids, um, you know, it's endless what will sort of create our reality in the moment. So people, I think, have to remember that even if you're coming for help, for tools that you have to be responsible for your own health and you have to take on the responsibility of healing whether that means yes. you know, doing some mindset yeah. mindset shifts or you know um anything from taking more moments to yourself for relaxation or improving your sleep reducing your stress there are so many outside factors that um, go into healing. So we're just one little part of it. So I like to believe that I, I really try to just give people tools at home. Um, but I'll be honest, um, I'd say maybe, maybe if that's being good, 20% will do the, the work. And you know what? Um, I get it. Life is busy. We'd always think about it. And especially when you start to feel a bit better, you, you don't think, oh, I'm going to do this stretch or I'm going to drink my two liters of water, or whatever, right? So the way that I go about it for clients is often I'll give one thing to do and I'll say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, how confident could do this every day? right? And if they say eight, I say, okay, well, that's not good enough. Let, let's figure out something else that you could give me a 10, right? And that could be even just like sleeping seven hours. They're like, okay, I'm going to do that. Or, you know, I'll, I'll go outside for some fresh air. Okay, perfect. If you could give me that 10 and you could do that for a full week, then okay, I'll, do, I'll give you the, the stuff that normally you would say a three or a four. And then that sort of builds on creating those habits because people need to to do things for themselves in a way that will impact change. Because if not, you're going to always come back in and see me, which I'm happy to help, but I like to give people tools so that they can create those habits at home. Right. Yeah. That's amazing because I, I think sometimes I've, I've heard, you know, some of my clients come in and say, well, I'm seeing a Cairo, I'm seeing a physio, I'm seeing an acupuncturist, you know, I'm, I'm also seeing my kin and you're all giving me exercises to do. And you know, if you, if you go to the same clinic, you know, you can always intertwine and blend those together and it's easier. But if someone is going to different clinics, I've had people say that it is really hard because, you know, everyone's giving different opinions. Everyone's giving different, um, you know, choice of exercises to focus on. So your way of doing it is perfect because it's, it's realistic. It's goal setting. You know, they can set alarms in their, their phone saying, Hey, like I got to drink, you know, this whole liter of water. But if I have reminders in my phone that are really annoying, then it will, yeah, like it'll trigger me to say like, the phone is great. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have their phone on their hip 24 seven these days? Like, especially during this whole thing, like I feel like everyone's on social media or whatever. So w why not just put another thing in your phone or the calendar or whatever? So definitely, I think it's, I think it's super important to find that balance and that kind of equilibrium per se of, you know, what's too much and what's too little for home care. So absolutely. So for someone who is coming in for the first time for acupuncture and they're really nervous because they don't like needles <laughs> and, um, you know, they don't know what it's like about, <laughs> like me, um, you know, what would be things that you would recommend them to maybe do or look into before coming into Accu so they're more comfortable? Um, so I think, 
coming in for the first time for any kind of treatment could be a bit nerve wracking for, for anyone. Right. Um, the unknown is what makes it nerve wracking. So if you're that type of person that needs a bit of information before you come in, uh, you could definitely look it up online. I mean, the, the web is like the, the information is all there all the time. Right. But also the biggest thing is, um, you always have, um, the right to choose to move forward with treatment or not. And that's the biggest thing I think people forget. So if at the end of, you know, our evaluation, you've asked your questions, uh, you, you have some concerns, you're not sure what's going to happen. Um, you've talked about the, the side effects, the benefits, and, and you're still not sure if you want to proceed, then you can for sure um, take back your consent and be like, okay, I'm, I'm still not feeling comfortable with this. So the, the thing that I, I do see sometimes is some people are a bit uncomfortable, especially the first time. And what we do is we try one point first. How did that feel? Like, are you feeling comfortable? Do you want to proceed? Do you want me to put more points in? Um, so let's say we, we come up with a plan and I'm like, okay, you're going to have 10 points in today. Right. And f especially for the first time, I'm not just going to put 10 points in without asking you how you're feeling. Right. So we'll, we'll start with the one point and then, and then go from there, but also know that you don't always have to use um, to receive the acupuncture. If you're that scared, you could always do the acupressure, right? You could change it after one point. You don't like it. You could be like, Hey, I'd rather you not continue. And we could do the acupressure. We could do the, the Twina, which is the Chinese massage on these points. We could use cupping, um, <clears throat> gua sha, et cetera, right? So it, just knowing that you're in control, right, is probably the best advice or the, be, the best that I, I can say. Because um, we often forget, right? We proceed with the treatment and you're like, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? And I'm here to the appointment. So I have no choice but to receive this. This is wrong. And people, people don't always know that, right? Yeah. And I think that's hard sometimes because, you know, when you're on the table and you're face down and you're really nervous and you, you know, you know what's going to happen, but you don't know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really important to tell our, our viewers as well as our clients don't be shy because, you know, A, you're trying to allow them to be their most vulnerable self and, you know, let them know that they do have a voice in all of this, you know, and hopefully that they will speak up and tell you like this hurts or not so much of this or whatever it is. So, you know, that is really important. So have you ever had a time where, you know, you went to work and you're feeling good or maybe had an off day or whatever and, you really impacted someone's life in regards to like a, a physical change, like the, the scoliosis that you were talking about. Um, is there any other stories that you've, you know, kind of experienced that have really changed or made you happy to be in your career? I have had so many, like, I think for me, um, I like people to feel well, uh, emotionally as well. Right. So what's really neat about acupuncture is, um, we affect the energy so much that the emotions are coming into play. And I think when I can help someone feel a bit more emotionally stable, I think that I love my job when I do that. Like I love my job always, but you know, I've had a few times where people come in with full of panic attacks, you know, the whole hyperventilation and everything. And boom, I just put a couple points and they just totally release and just relax. And, I think those are there those are more extreme changes that I've seen and then when they leave they're just like wow I, I totally feel totally different and that happens within like half an hour right and I'm like wow you know this this person had so much built up of energy in inside certain meridians that just needed to let go and sometimes people don't have the tools like we you know we don't live in a, in always a conscious world of our energy and where it goes in our body. We often are a little bit numb to what's going on. So when I could impact someone that way, um, 
or, or someone who's had pain forever and be like, oh my God, for example, like my shoulder has been hurting for 15 years. And then we get into the digestive system, for example, and they've also suffered from constipation for 15 years. While the meridian of the large intestine passes through the shoulder. So then, you know what? So I suggest different dietary changes, um, different things like that. And the digest, digest, digestion improves. And then the shoulder pain leaves. And like, those are moments where I'm like, okay, this is amazing. I was able to find, you know, um, and I have a funny story. I have um, one lady when I first started doing acupuncture came in with Bell's palsy. Um, so, you know, Bell's palsy, yes. maybe our viewers don't. So Bell's palsy is actually the paralysis of half of the face. Um, and so, uh, um, I had this lady who came in, I think at the time she was about maybe 75 years old. So imagine, you know, someone who's 75 years old, they're starting to get wrinkly and that sort of thing. And then half her face isn't functioning. So her lip is droopy, her eye is crying and, you know, she's, and, yep. you know, we had, some, we had some good laughs, but what ended up happening is I treated half the face because I was treating the functional part of the paralysis, right? So I didn't touch the good part of the, the other side of the face. And so after a month of treatment, two to three times a week, you know, all her function came back on her face um, and she was super grateful and that was super Holy. fun. But, um, because I didn't treat the other side, the good side, um, you know, the last treatment she came in, she was like, Could it, is it possible that this treatment helps with wrinkles? Because I've noticed like the good part of my face that wasn't paralyzed is more wrinkly than the other. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, forgetting that uh, wrinkles and you know, it helps to bring good, good healing properties through the stimulating the, the collagen and good circulation. And it also made, you know, that paralyzed, that, that previous paralyzed side of her face, you know, more rejuvenated, a bit more youthful. Wow. So I ended up giving her treatments for another month just to sort of balance out the wrinkles <laughs> from the good side, which was a good laugh. She was probably so confused. It's like, did it get yeah. transferred to the other side? Like, what is happening? Oh, my gosh. That's, yeah, that's well, beautiful. I should have taken a picture of that, right? Like, before and after. For That would have been amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, no way. I, I think sometimes in the moment, you just want to, you know, help them as best you can. And you're not thinking, exactly. you know, there's so many things that can happen in a positive way that, you know, if you just see it in person, sometimes that's, you know, that's perfect for you, right? And I think... Um, growing with your clients as well, building that trust, that respect and everything like that will also make them a lot more comfortable with you as a therapist, as well as the treatments. Because if you are, you know, afraid of uh, acupuncture and you still want to come in for treatments and get the acupressure, then, you Mm -hmm. know, who knows, slowly you'll be able to go into using the full needles or whichever, because, I mean, that's how I started. They, you know, they used a gun, the the gun at one point, like the Kairos do. Um, you know, then when we did acupressure and then we went into the needles and yeah, okay. it's a good time. <laughs> I love it. Like for everyone, like everyone's comfort level, um, you know, grows differently at different pace. So it's, it's, it's always about um, building that trusting relationship with your therapist, whether that's an acupuncturist or massage therapist or osteopath, et cetera. You know what, if, if you're not feeling that connection or you feel that the person you're, you're going to seek help for is not the right one for you, then that is okay, right? Like you could seek out whoever, whoever you think will, will, will give you the best sort of results. Absolutely. Is there a way to find acupuncturists like in Ontario, for example, like, is there a website that someone can go on and kind of look into these people? Absolutely. So um, just like all the other healthcare professions, we have a regulatory body that helps protect and regulate the profession. So ours is CTCMPAO. Dot com and on the web page sorry dot ca <laughs> <laughs> on the web page there's um um there's a search like a search uh, bar 
yeah, there's a search bar and you could search in your area or by name. Um, and you could see who's registered. And who's how registered. do, if people want to just go on like Google, cause you know, that's like the first thing people do, they go on, they check reviews on people that are local. Do you have any recommendations as to what people should look for? Um, when it comes to an acupuncturist online, like is there certain certifications that should be beside their name or anything like that, that they should, they would instantly know that they are certified. So, um, R dot cap, uh, AC. So registered acupuncturists, right. R A C would be the, um, the, uh, the title, the, the abbreviation in front of the name to look for. And um, there's additional qualifications for registered acupuncturists that can prescribe herbs as well. So again, uh, that is a little bit um, more in depth. So some of the acupuncturists are, are um, registered acupuncturists or registered Chinese medical practitioner. So RCMP. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think. Yeah. Perfect. That's good to know. That's good to know. And is there anything else that you want to throw out there for our viewers about acupuncture? Um, I think ac acupuncture has been around for thousands of years in the East and um, the concepts um, are a way of living for people in the East. And we've adopted some of that in the West in the last few years. And more than ever, we need to be in balance because we live in a little bit of an unbalanced world. And I think even through this quarantine time, everyone could sort of see that this sort of pause in our lives are, um, are helping us sort of find a, a balance, right? So I think everyone should give acupuncture a try at some point in their lives if they wish. Um, and again, if you're uncomfortable with, with some of those ideas, um, you don't have to do the acupuncture. You could try any of the modalities that come with, with rebalancing the body's energy. So I think everyone could benefit from, from the acupuncture. Heck yes. I support it a hundred percent. And, you know, from our viewers and myself, thank you so much for being on this podcast. I'm super grateful for all the education that you've given us because who knows, you know, when all this is over, hopefully people come in and book some appointments and, and know more about the actual profession itself. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of Lattes with Lindsay. See you later. Mm -hmm.